And now for the final congruence theorem. We can prove that triangles are congruent um, using a variety of sides and an angles. But if you have a right triangle, you have one more option. And it is called the hypotenuse leg theorem. So as you can imagine, that's why it doesn't have S's and A's. So it's a hypotenuse and a leg. Let's recall the different parts of a right triangle. Right triangle has a right angle. The hypotenuse is the slanty side. It is the longest side of the triangle. It is opposite the right angle. The other two sides are both called legs. Now, in order to prove you have um, congruent triangles and they're right triangles, hypotenuse leg is technically SSA in disguise. It says that if the hypotenuse and leg of a triangle are congruent to the corresponding hypotenuse and leg of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Well, basically, what is it you need in order to have hypotenuse leg? You need to have congruent hypotenuses. You need to have one pair of congruent legs. And you must mention right angles. Without the right angles, you don't actually have a hypotenuse or a leg. You only have sides and angles. And there is no such thing as SSA. So you don't have to mention that the right angles are congruent, but you must mention that you have right angles and you have perfectly proven this theorem. The next thing we need to know is about something called CPCTC. And this stands for a whole lot, so get your pens ready. It stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. What it's saying is that if your two triangles are congruent, then all of the corresponding bits and pieces get to be congruent. And that should make some sense to you. The last little bit that we need to know, if you haven't learned about isosceles triangles yet, is something called the base angles theorem and its converse. And the base angles theorem works like this. It says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, so it's basically saying if given an isosceles triangle, then the angles opposite them are also congruent. So the way you can write it is if the sides are congruent, then the angles are congruent. My old math teacher said, um, these are tick marks here. These little guys down here are also tick marks, but she would say, if tick, then talk. This is nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. You need to draw the symbols, but in class, we will say, if tick, then talk. Now, the converse also works. So that um, if you have congruent base angles, so if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are also congruent. So if you have congruent base angles, then you know you have an isosceles triangle. So basically, if talk, then tick. So if the angles are congruent, then the sides are congruent. And there you have it. We can use CPCTC to prove this and HL, and we will practice with those in class.